Tatohiyuk, 2000, August 14th. 2000 T307.04, space 158, west wall. All right, so we have the date today, right? You know what the date is, okay. So we are looking uh, at the west face of the west wall in building three, and that feature is uh, uh, 636. And the wall next to it, lower down, is feature 635. Now both, uh, the 635 is the early wall, 636 uh, six is the late wall. No, the reason we're looking at this late wall again is because we have removed some layers of the midden that was sitting right next to it before and now we have exposed some more of the edge of the wall and we see the bricks and how they go. Uh, what seems to be the case, what has been suggested by uh, Peja is that the bricks that we see here are actually the bricks that on the other end come all the way down to here. This is that and that would be one brick sloping towards the east, having a very sharp slope. slope. And then uh, on top of that sloping brick, which was by the way cut, if that is the true, cut to some extent, uh, were, were put other bricks. Now if this is the case, and we will check that once we start excavating the bricks of this wall, that would mean that this would be yet another phase, earlier phase of the same wall, which uh, had to be uh, mended. And at this point, they had to cut these bricks um, under an angle and then put these additional bricks on top of them. And in addition to that, then we had another shoring wall in front of it, which is uh, 600 uh, feature number. Now this, uh, the west, late west wall uh, goes obviously all the way from this corner, but we do don't see it uh, at the moment completely clearly because it's not um, cleaned out well, but it will be later. It goes all the way to the northern corner of the building. And in this part of the building, it is obviously sitting on top of this earlier floor, a uh, wall, sorry. Uh, and, ooh, God. And um, removing the midden also exposed yet another feature or previous feature that was cut at some point in its history. And most likely the feature that belonged earlier to this building, so it was inside the building. This could actually, this has some elements of, a, of an oven, which usually typically are found at Chatelhuyuk on the west wall, and in this case that would fit fine. And this would be our one oven, and then here in the very corner we have another uh, earlier oven from the same, I mean earlier oven, anyway. So this, uh, if this turns out to be remains of an oven, then at, we can imagine that the west wall was further west in yet another phase of the building. And at that point, this was the oven inside the building, obviously, and then that was cut when this floor was put in. And how that relates to this floor is not clear yet, but it might be that this is one later, or maybe even the earliest floor, I don't know yet. So this feature made of red bricks coincides to some extent with these remains, the same type of clay, a very compact clay that we found here in the secondary position. And it, to some extent it coincides also with the so-called convex convex bricks, which were um, dug by us last week that were all put in here along the wall and on top of, along this wall, on top of the earlier wall and we consider them to be part of the shoring of the west wall and therefore they belong, they have their feature number which is 628. And if we look further uh, at, at this wall 636 feature, we can see a nice nicely preserved bricks and mortars and then brick and mortar and all the way to the northern end 
The mortars are r rather um, special because um, they're made of very special clay. They're made of clay that was not mixed very well, that was just cut out of its clay bed. And it's um, very compact and very hard. And it seems that it was just put in as a layer between the two bricks, as a mortar layer. So not well prepared could indicate working in a hurry and not having enough time to do a proper job. Even though we f do find this kind of mortar, clay useful mortar in other places, in other buildings on the site. Uh, so um, here we have still the remains of feature 171, which was attached to this wall and later on damaged by the wall. And this feature um, we removed the floor levels on it and we are now down to the um, packing uh, layer which is uh, very coarse in this part of the feature and slightly finer in the middle and then very fine, was very fine on this northern end where the packing of the feature coincided with the packing of the floor of the rest of this um, part of space 158. Now what's interesting is that most of this early wall was feature 635 was only used for shoring. It was stuff, rubble and um, some, mostly rubble on top of it in that part in the south, from the center to the south. But from the center to the north, we have this feature that was put on top of it. So we are obviously not talking about the same floor level. In this, uh, starting from the center north and then from the center south. There are different level, floor levels and they are vastly different, even though they're so close in, in time, even though they're so close in space. Because here the white floor goes well with this wall plasters and so they, it belongs, these white floors belong to uh, the ha this phase of the house when they use the original uh, wall. And these floors that are more orange and different um, belong to this feature which is sitting on top of that floor. Therefore, these, walls, these floors are later. And then we come to this area which is in a way separated from the rest. And we cannot completely connect it with these two, but it's important to to note that there is a big distinction between the two parts of the house in terms of uh, this one was used in the, in the later periods much more and this southern part seems to uh, be used much less in the late periods. Okay, so the idea is to proceed with removing the late west wall feature 636 and in a m typical manner brick, um, mortar, brick, mortar and then to expose these bricks and see whether they really were belonging to yet another earlier phase of the same thing or not. And then we'll see what to do about this feature and whether we can recognize if it is uh, still uh, an oven or not. Okay, and we can stop there. 2000 T307.05, Space 86, yes. kitchen area on the 14th of August. Okay, so here we are looking at the southern half of building three at a so-called kitchen area, which uh, extends between the platform 173, platform 167 and platform 169. And this is the area that's uh, slightly cut into the floor. I mean, the floor is slightly cut into the terrain. It's deeper down and uh, it's, um, it's distinguished here from the platform by this uh, this feature that's going like that and falling down towards the sloping down towards the center of the building and in between this platform 170 and 73 and this other feature which is still not clear we have to go deeper down to find that we have a layer of very white clay which we don't know um, how that really whether that's part of the floor or just part of some packing nice white packing that was put in between the two now on the on the towards the center the kitchen area as we noted before is this, uh, this divided from the center of the house by this white step which is not white at the moment but that's only because we haven't cleaned it properly 
The main features inside the kitchen area is this feature 613, which is uh, a hearth or maybe even an oven of some sort that kept uh, that that was rebuilt through many floor phases, and uh, we don't have any apparent other features. Uh, here in the kitchen, except for a lot of floor and floor plasters that we can see uh, surrounding uh, the, the hearth. Uh, there are, however, three cuts that might be very important, each of them a feature, that could be related to the entrance and the entering ladder into the house. And all of them are similar, similar size and similar shape but they are just in different places. One of them was part of the platform, and then the next one was on the outside of the same platform. That would be that one. And then the next one would be in the continuation of that somewhere here, more towards the center. So they all uh, could be, and the fourth one could be even here in this area. And because they are all quite similar and we, uh, we uh, have other evidences from other buildings that one of the posts for the ladder was part of the platform, like in this case. We do believe that these might easily be all uh, holes from these ladder posts. Uh, they all were, uh, except for that, the first, very first one, they were um, tacked after they uh, stopped being used with a nice brown, orangish uh, packing clay. And uh, obviously this one, this clay also extends on this end and this could be yet another uh, hole on this other side. In addition to that, everything that we saw uh, in the kitchen area were the layers of the floors and the layers of the residue uh, on the floors. And these resi residue vary from very uh, obviously ashy black ones like this area here with a lot of uh, charcoal fragments to much, uh, much fine residue, much darker, almost totally black, and uh, with less, um, with smaller particles than this. But they all come down to more or less the same thing. And uh, the, the floor plasters were made of clay, usually this brownish clay, orangish brown clay. They are relatively thin, and all of them, uh, through use, got a very grayish, surface layer, which was uh, we, we have sampled for different types of analysis. In the, in the case over here, uh, close to the south wall, uh, we have um, the evidence of packing. And this is totally different packing, floor packing, than we had in, in other parts of the building. It consists of very coarse remains of burnt uh, clay, probably something to do with the uh, previous ovens and uh, burnt stone and probably more burnt stone and some clay balls and so forth. So all that was used as a packing in order to make a stronger base for the floors. And this, of course, was covered with a nice clay floor, but we exposed it half of it. The other half is still remains of the floor. So around the, the feature 613, around the, the, the heart, we, that was sunk into the floor, as we can see here by its rim. We had usually nicely plastered layers of floor, and under those layers we can see still remains of use of this area and traces of uh, the same residues as in the rest of the kitchen area. So we are going to go down here, remove the feature 613, remove the floors and get down to the earlier phase. We have earlier phase in this part of the building. We can see that in our post-retrieval pit and in our uh, animal holes. Uh, also, in addition to that in the kitchen, what we have is the whole eastern uh, part of the platform, uh, feature 169, which was also used for kitchen purposes. And we had a series of um, hearts that were cut in the oven and used through time. At least here we had one and an earlier one that, that would be two. Then we had a nice one here that'd be three and then probably number four over here. So at least four hearts used at different time periods uh, in this uh, as a kitchen uh, utensils. And these hearts, that's very important, all of these hearts 
uh, happen to be now um, excavated at the same time as feature 613, but they don't belong to the same phase. 613 is much, um, much later oven, and these would be earlier ovens on the platform. So in the beginning they would use first, first this area for their hearts and then later on they would use this part of the kitchen for the, for the hearth or an oven. Thank you. Michael, that's enough. Uh, just next to the wall, uh, south wall or in the kitchen area, we have a nice line here, a uh, plaster, plaster line, which is a line of plaster that belongs to the floor that um, I believe goes underneath all of these kitchen floors. And that could be the same uh, uh, floor level as this here, or it might be another one which is underneath this, because we can see that there are other uh, white floor levels that go underneath this, on top of which um, are all of these kitchen floors and residues. So this is that line that goes nicely and connects here with the plaster nicely along the wall. It stops somewhere in this area for now. We haven't discovered it going further this way, and this is exactly where we imagine to um, have the, the, the remains of the ladder of the entrance into the house and that makes sense that the floor would stop there and not continue this way because this part of the floor had to be prepared and replastered in different ways and at, uh, and at um, different time. Okay. Beep, 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 me, me. Today, uh, you've got it on the, pl on the board. Today is the 14th of August 2000. I am standing in feature 173. My it's name. Oh, really? You didn't tell me to say that. 2000T307.06. That's I. And this is my feet. <laughs> I'm standing on um, the top of floor six of platform feature 173, that's this one here. And this is in fact the earliest platform of, uh, or earliest floor of phase D as we call it. That is, it's the, just when we remove this, we're going down into phase C, which is where they've reached over much of the floor here in space 86. <laughs> um, I just want to start off just by showing you where we are in the profile here. This is the south profile of feature 602. Oh, God, it's a fucking nail. <laughs> okay, well, let's hear that with the sixth grader. <laughs> okay, so this is, on this is the top of phase C, and that's um, floor 7 at... Um, I think it's, oh well anyway, it's the top of, this is feature 170, <coughs> I think it's floor 7 um, here, and this is the one that's going to follow, be followed all the way under what is now the southern part of feature 173. So what we'll be doing is to take off this thing and reveal the C phase configuration of platform feature 170. I hope you can see this floor goes up like that and then we can follow the C floors, two of them, in feature 173 like a sandwich, white, black, white sandwich. See it all along here, it's lovely. Or perhaps white, brown, white sandwich. A Marmite sandwich or perhaps a chocolate spread sandwich. <laughs> anyway, we, we can see that all the way through here. So that's what I'm, one, that was the first thing I wanted to show. The next thing I want to show is that um, standing here on the top of floor six, uh, we have wonderful floor, nice white floor, all the way to about here on this side and all the way to about here on this side. Um, it's really very clear, nice thick white floor. And um, here what we've done is to clean off the corresponding floor of the 
of uh, feature 162 here where they're doing the burial and um, have followed it so that we can actually see the floor, this, this floor here, which is actually slightly below where, they, where the floor is at the moment on feature 162, that this floor is actually the same as this floor. So we can see that in fact on this platform we're still at D according to these floors and so on if they're correct. So um, that was the other thing we did. This is the nice white plaster. It looks, looks a little bit cream in this cream coloured, or is it my eyes? It looks a bit cream coloured rather than white in this light. Anyway, this is the packing below and this is the actual plaster. Um, it came off, or rather we took it off by mistake here, so that's why you have that looking there. Okay, now you can come over towards here because I'm going to show um, some of the kind of weird stuff that's going on on the northern end of this feature here. Um, here you can see in the profile there's some kind of big cut that's gone all the way down, it's coming all across here, actually goes somewhere to here, maybe even more, but anyways, at least to here. And whether it's this that has caused weird things to happen to the platform here, i.e. <laughs> maybe there is some kind of a pit under here, or what's happening, we're not sure, but it seems as though something very different happens to the floor here at this point, and we've drawn it on the plan round about here. Um, at the same time, we have a, another, a, another pit that's actually um, cut into the east wall at this point, and we're not sure what that's for or why it's there but it certainly is cut through the floors here, which we can see the edges of the floors here. Our, we've got our white and black and white sandwich of sea down there, and we've got this floor nice and clearly showing up. Um, it might have something to do with the red layer, which is redeposited or deposited oven material, burned material at <coughs> a lower level. It might be an oven, might be something. Anyway, this is feature 633 and is itself a sort of an interesting cut through the floors at this point. And at the same time, we have this other thing, this cut, whatever it is, which upsets the whole floor area here, makes it sag, and you can't, there's no real floor. <clears throat> there never really has been any real floor at this point. So and instead, there's this sort of hump, and then it dives down here. Okay, just wanted to point that out. Then floor up at this end too, always. And the fill is very different, all in this half. So we're not sure what happens in the northeast corner here of the building, but we do know there's a huge amount of disturbance. And we can see a, an amount of disturbance here. Then the, the floors disappear, they dive down and so on. They've been packed to repair them. Um, in all in the corner there and all here, we can see this kind of, um, there have been repairs. This is the real floor, but you can see it's very uneven. And this is probably due partly to animal activity along the, the sides of the house, because there are all sorts of yummy things to eat along the sides of the house and in the corners. It also probably has to do with um, wet, damp damage getting in, in the corners and so on. So then we can see some of that. So anyway, that's uh, probably all to point out here. Okay, that's it. It's kind of nice having humans in the shot every now and then. <laughs> dead or alive. Dead, or, dead and alive in this case. So what do you think you have here? Uh, oh, we're on. Your assessment of the moment? Uh. <laughs> this yeah. by some time no, oh, would well, you be quiet over there? In theory. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we have so far two individuals here. But, um, 
mustard in the original food, probably. Uh, another one later, articulated one, hopefully. I'm oh, sorry, I missed that last word, isn't it? Well, we have white. several individuals here. We have um, some legs here and feet here and then some scattered bones over here. And this one seems to be oriented in an east-west orientation. Then we have uh, part of the head starting here, coming over here, look, which obviously looks displaced from any other position because it's not connected to anything. Then we have another foot over here. So we're trying to assess, we have three burial cuts, one, two going in a north-south direction, and one was here in an east-west direction. So we have three burial cuts, and we just hopefully will have three individuals. How's that? <laughs> that was perfect. Very concise. Thank you very much. And to the south, feature six, four, eight, what, what happened here, Emery? You were cutting through the. My stuff And found two little skulls, which will probably be big skulls when the day is over or the week. Starting in the uh, northeast corner, we took down, oh, we finished um, going to the top of floor six here and uh, drew it, photoed it, so on. And um, then we started at, uh, to take down floor six down to floor seven, which is down to the C phase. And so far we've got to defining the new south end of feature 173. Okay, over here, the plot thickens <laughs> in the northwest corner. Um, Bashak and Laurie have been excavating here in this uh, very open, 162. Yes, very open now. And you've got the bones of several individuals. You've got two crania there, right? One, two. Mm -hmm. And some long bones. Legs. <laughs> arm. Going east west. Arm, legs. I'm going all no, which no, way? Legs. All the legs are going east west. Not this one. Aha. Uh -huh. Not that one. And then it's going all the way, little feet down here at the eastern end. Another and more, foot, don't oh, forget this lovely foot. I got foot. that little foot, and then that little foot down there on the northern end. And uh, very complicated. There's, oh, and they're going under there, yes, exactly. Okay, enough of that. No story, just a cut and a burial. Okay, so. Um, um, Anne-Marie was investigating the cut this morning and came on two crania in the northern part of this cut and it looks as though it's, at, um, what do we say, it's cutting, has it cut into the previous platform, the earlier phase of the platform? Because at one point you thought it was going underneath. That belongs to the floors that... Uh, this is, uh, what is five this to ten. Uh, no, on top of ten. Belongs cut from ten or so. Okay, I have to see my. And um, it's right up against the old edge of uh, platform one six two. Okay. So meanwhile I've been cleaning the floor up against the screen wall and then in the no uh, southwest corner the book's been doing some taking down the floor still of um, platform 169 and the fire installation. He's come upon a fire installation, that's a new one isn't it? He's come upon an older, earlier one. Mm. That's underneath the floor, is it, or is it? Uh, I 
it was underneath the previous mm. installation whose number I don't know. Six three two or six three zero. Okay, and here Anna's been removing feature six one three. Not really this no, it's still there, isn't it? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Laura, today Laura and Lu Chen drew the east wall and the south wall. This is yesterday. Okay, scrap that. They didn't draw the south wall. They <laughs> drew instead the west wall. They are in the process of drawing the west west wall. And over here. So, um, was anything happening here today? Uh, continuation of removal of the Oops. Uh, 629 removal of the second floor. 629. Yeah. Which one's that? The pit? No, the oh, the floor in here. Part. The floor in the northern part of Space 158, which is 629. Walls being removed, second floor, and more stuff being removed from west of the west wall.